In many cases, the cross sections that we're going to analyze are built of other common uh, shapes like rectangles, triangles, circles. And in those cases, we don't have to use integrals to be able to determine the moment of inertia of a cross section. In that case, we can use the moment of inertia of those simpler shapes and analyze the system that way. So for example, let's say that we have a cross section that is built of something like this. Let's say, um, for the sake of ex an example, it's something like this. And let's say that, they were, that we are interested in analyzing the moment of inertia about this axis x. Well, we can break this section in two different smaller shapes. We can break down in a triangle and a rectangle. And you can Google second moment of area or moment of inertia, and you're gonna find a number of tables that, are, that they're going to tell you what are the moment of inertia for those common shapes, rectangles, triangles, circles, semicircles, and all other common shapes. So to be able to find the total moment of inertia, what we need to do is to add the moment of inertia of the first section and the second section. But before we can do that, we have to apply the parallel axis theorem to calculate the moment of inertia with respect to a common axis, and that is that axis that I've drawn in there. We cannot simply just add the moments of inertia about the, uh, about the centroid of each shape. They have to be in a common axis. So in nutshell, what we wanna do is to consider the moment of inertia for each shape, we want to use the parallel axis theorem to calculate it uh, about the common axis. Parallel axis theorem to calculate the moment of inertia about a common axis. And then all we need to do is to add all of those moments of inertia. But key part is using that parallel axis theorem. Uh, let me give you a reminder of that parallel axis theorem. So when we look at the parallel axis theorem, What we're saying is if I have a shape, let's say they were looking at this triangle just to say something. And I, uh, from a table, I can find the moment of inertia about an axis and let's say that that's with respect to the centroid. So it's gonna be my X axis. And I'm gonna have a parallel axis. And in this case, that parallel axis is going to be somewhere over here. This is gonna be my X prime axis. I can calculate the moment of inertia about the X prime axis as following. Moment of inertia about the X prime axis is equal to moment of inertia about the X axis. This is the one that goes through the centroid of that shape, plus my area times my distance squared. The area is the area of the triangle, and the distance is the distance between the two parallel axes. Right. Perpendicular distance between those two parallel axes. That's it, so that's, that's my parallel axis theory. So one of the things that is commonly done when you're doing these calculations is you can do a, 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 a table to show all your calculations. So you will have, for example, the section, you have section one, section two, right? You're gonna have another column for your moment of inertia about the centroid. For each individual shape, 
and that will be units of length to the four. Remember, these are the units of uh, moments of inertia. Then we can have another column for the area of each of the shapes, for the distance between the parallel axes, that's the, the axis going through the centroid of the shape and the common axis for the whole uh, um, composite section. And then you can have another column that shows your moment of inertia about that common axis. So A plus D squared. So you have numbers for all of those. And the number that we're looking for is the summation of that last column, right? That This is going to be the moment of inertia of my composite section. All right, now what to do in case you have holes? So you might have is a circle in the middle of a section, perhaps. So in those cases, what you want to do is consider the value in this last column to be negative, right? So the value of the moment of inertia about the common axis to be negative. So instead of adding that value, you're gonna subtract that value. 